The rising sun marks the start of a new day, and in Africa's Kalahari Desert, the wildlife is already awake and busy. This masked weaver bird scans the area, carefully collecting blades of dry grass to build his nest. Most birds simply build what looks like a loose bowl of twigs, but this is a weaver bird, and like his namesake, he weaves his nests into intricate structures. These chambers hang from trees, an impressive feat of avian architecture. Their cousins, the sociable weaver birds, take nest building even further. Together, a colony will build a huge compound nest, containing more than a hundred chambers, each one housed under a single roof. It's a bird apartment complex, one of the world's largest nests, and it isn't just for breeding. Weavers live in them throughout the year. Some nests lasting for even a century, as it passes from generation to generation. To craft his nest, the weaver bird loops together blades of grass around a tree branch. Having created the base, he then builds the hollow body before adding the entrance last. He'll need around a thousand blades to make a strong nest, and this may take him a few weeks to complete. Some species design domes, while others prefer tubed entrances. But nests of the sociable weaver birds aren't made in the same way. They don't so much weave them, rather they stack them with whatever plant material they can find. True weaver birds are only found in the subfamily Placeini. In the whole weaver family, there are over a hundred species, most of which live in sub-Saharan Africa. The family originated in the mid-Miocene around 15 million years ago. It was a time when African ecosystems made the shift from forests to grasslands, allowing early weavers to spread and radiate into the species seen today. Although some aren't true weavers, they can all build elaborate nests, and the journey of how this behaviour emerged may be simpler than expected. The weaver family belongs to a group of birds known as passerines. Most passerines today build open nests, and it could easily be assumed that some birds then learn to enclose them. But this study found it was actually the other way around. Open nests evolved from closed nests in ancient passerines, even occurring independently at least three times. They're simple and easy to build, and they don't cost as much energy, and yet the weaver birds still kept their roofs. In the Kalahari, temperatures can climb to 110 degrees Fahrenheit during the day, and dip by 40 at night. Enclosed nests offer more protection from these weather extremes, preventing birds and their eggs from reaching deadly temperatures. They also free parents from the burden of incubation, as they no longer need to provide constant shade for the young themselves, and suffer under the blazing sun. For weavers, they are stable homes. In fact, they may be so well adapted for extreme conditions that they could have restricted their dispersal, as weavers are mostly found in hot, dry climates. Other passerine birds expanded into a wide range of habitats, losing the domes and opting for a more freeing nest shape. In early weavers, solitary nesting may have then led to group nesting. This may be seen in the Plosopassarini subfamily, where the sporopipes mostly breed alone while the other genera breed in colonies. It isn't uncommon for small birds to live in groups. They flock together, moving to wherever there's food or water. In groups, information can be easily exchanged between individuals, allowing birds to follow whoever's managed to find food. And this can be useful especially when food appears in abundant patches. Weaver birds mostly feed on insects, and since there's enough to go around, group living can be favoured. It can also reduce the risk of predation. Small birds tend to have many natural enemies, and so the larger the colony, the more eyes on the lookout, and the lower the chances of being targeted. In weavers, selection may have driven larger groups, but when there are too many in a single tree, 
it can get a little crowded. Physical contact between nests occurs, and eventually some nests are even built directly next to others, fused together into a single mass. Usually, birds and colonies are still territorial. They can get aggressive, defending their space by pecking and squawking at the intruder. But an enclosed nest helps to more easily define the boundaries of a territory, and allows birds to tolerate their neighbours, even in tight masses. This may have been an important precursor for the evolution of compound nesting. In grey-capped social weavers, birds may build both separate and compound nests, so they may represent an intermediate stage towards this behaviour. But sociable weavers differ in that they also build a communal roof over their nests. The roof requires colony members to work together to maintain. This behaviour was long thought to be driven by the extra security from predators, but predation rates are still high. In fact, on average, 70% of clutches are often raided, especially from snakes. So perhaps this roof-building behaviour was driven by temperature control instead. Some studies have even suggested it's maintained by kin selection. Sociable weavers are very cooperative birds, Nearly all breeding pairs are assisted by helpers. Juveniles will also help feed their younger siblings and even neighbours. And because close neighbours tend to be relatives, building a communal roof may be driven by kin selection, since it benefits the extended family as well. Not all birds contribute to the job equally, but those that do are more closely related to colony members than those that don't. In weavers, Parallel evolution of compound nesting has even occurred across the different subfamilies. And convergent evolution across different species highlights the significance of this behaviour in small birds. These nests are a work of animal architecture, capturing beautifully how nature strives for survival in the most magnificent of ways. <laughs>